Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see your smiling faces. We want to say hello to those who are over at Portage and as well as those who are online with us this morning. You know, we've been going through a series uh, starting in May, and it's going to take us all the way through the summer called Wind and Fire, where we're studying through the book of Acts. And this weekend is actually going to be what John Wimber referred to as a lab. And what that means is you put into practice what you're studying. And so this weekend, we've called Prophetic Presbytery. How many of you have ever been a part of a Prophetic Presbytery weekend here at Radiant Church before? Raise your hand. Okay. So a lot of you, I can't say Portage, but I know a bunch of you over there. It's been, a, I think it's been three years since we've hosted it. So along the way, several, several of you, probably a lot of you have come into church and are like, what in the world is Prophetic Presbytery? Well, number one, it doesn't mean that we're becoming Presbyterians. It does not mean that. (laughs) Although we have some great friends in the Presbyterian church, but the word presbytery, and that's how you say it. Let's all practice it. Say presbytery. I'm going to say it one more time. One, two, three. Okay. It's some people say presbytery, but they're wrong. And so it's presbytery and it's, Presbytery is a word that means a council of elders or spiritual leaders. So when you have a presbytery, you have a gathering of elders, leaders, prophets, apostles. It's a, that's what it is. And Paul uses this word in 1 Timothy chapter 1 when he tells Timothy to take the prophetic words that have been spoken over him. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, he says, the, the prophetic words that have been spoken over you by the presbytery or by the council of elders. And between those two verses, he says, I want you to wage the good warfare. Go back and remember the prophetic words that have been spoken over you and wage warfare and fulfill your ministry. So prophetic presbytery is a weekend that we've set aside to invite uh, uh, several, in fact, we have four presbyters or prophetic ministers that we have a relationship with to come into the church and to pray and to prophesy over candidates that we have been praying and we have selected. Most of them are either emerging or key leaders or some of our new staff. And we want to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to prophesy and to speak over their lives. And then even beyond those candidates to open up environments and services where they can give spontaneous prophetic words to people. And so that is what prophetic presbytery is about. And that's this weekend. So if you're new to this, um, go ahead and buckle up a little bit because you've been driving a Ford Festiva. You just stepped into a Porsche. And I say that in a great way because it's going to be a great weekend because when the prophetic spirit is present in a church and when we are in services like this where we're just really keying in on what God is saying, it's really, really powerful and it's transformational on an individual level and also in a corporate environment. How many know that God still speaks? God still speaks. That's what the whole book of Acts tells us. From Acts 1 to Acts 28, we see God speaking in powerful, powerful ways. Genesis chapter 1, it says, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, let there be light. Revelation 22, it says, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. So the first verse and the last verse in all 66 books of the Bible are all about a God who speaks, not a God who is on mute. And so the gift of prophecy is one of the most powerful gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to the church. So I want you to look with me in your Bibles real quickly at Acts chapter 10. This is where we land in our series, and I'm going to do a like a 10-minute little mini teaching here about the power of the fact that God still speaks. And because we believe in miracles, they've trusted me to preach for 10 minutes, That would be a miracle, but I believe he's part of the Red Sea. He can part the clock as well, right? Amen. Acts chapter 10, verse number one. It says that Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion who was known or who led what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all of his household. He gave alms generously to the people, that's the Jewish people, and he prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror, and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. 
Now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. So the rest of the chapter, if we had time to break it all down, is you will find that this encounter is more than just one example of how God spoke through an angelic emissary to one of the apostles. This is actually a dramatic turning point in both Simon Peter's life and in the church and in the mission of Jesus. Because what you'll find out is that shortly after this moment, imagine, you know, Cornelius is a Roman. He's not a, a Christian. He's, he's not Jewish, but he's found himself living in Israel, probably raised as a pagan, but he comes to a belief in the God of the Jews, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so because of that, he's very generous. He's very kind to the Jewish people. He's given donations to the temple. And now, because there's a spiritual hunger in his heart where he's praying and he's crying out to God, God, I want to know you. God sends an angelic ambassador to him to tell him to send for a man named Simon Peter, who's over in Joppa. And shortly after this, this takes place on one day. The next day, Simon, who's one of the 12 apostles, we all know Simon Peter, he's up on the roof praying. And as he's praying, he has a vision, a trance, in which he's in the spirit and he sees a, you know, kind of like a whiteboard drop down out of the sky and all kinds of unclean, unkosher animals on the screen. And the Lord speaks to him, rise, kill, and eat. This is how we know that God is not a vegan because he's calling us to eat the meat. Amen? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. All right. Don't, don't send me dietary books in the mail or emails. God did this, not me. But actually, he tells him, rise, kill, and eat, Peter. But what he was saying to Peter was much more than about the dietary issues because Peter said, no, Lord, I won't do that. I, nothing unclean has ever entered my mouth. What he's saying is, back to God, is God... I've always obeyed you and I've avoided things that are unclean and that I should not touch. Uh, my heart is consecrated. But God is saying to Peter that everything has now changed in Jesus. And one of the things that has changed, obviously, is the dietary restrictions. But bigger than that is not just food that you've previously considered off, off limits or out of bounds, but it's people. And he was showing Peter this so that when these emissaries from Cornelius showed up at his house and knocked on the door in a few moments, he would not turn them away and say, I'm not supposed to have anything to do with Gentiles or Romans. I can't do that. I'm Jewish. But his heart was opened up. And when they said, we're from a man named Cornelius, who's a military leader, he's a Roman. He called for us for you to come and tell him about how to be saved. Simon went and he went. And when he shows up there in Caesarea, at Cornelius's house, Cornelius has a small group of his friends and family and probably leaders and friends gathered in the house, ready and hungry to hear how to be saved and to hear more about Jesus. And so Peter begins to preach to him. This is astounding. A Jewish, uh, a, a Jewish young man in the home of a Roman military leader telling him about the Messiah named Jesus. And as Peter is preaching, he doesn't even get to get done with his sermon. And the Holy Spirit is poured out on them in that room. And they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like the original 12 or the original 11 and the 120 in the upper room did on day one. They begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. And Simon doesn't even get to give the altar call. He doesn't even get to the end of his message. God just moves sovereignly on them. And here's what this did. Not only did it impact Cornelius and Simon, but it became a turning point for the church because now the doors of preaching and proclaiming the gospel to non-Jewish people was open for the very first time. This is several years after the resurrection. And up until this time, the gospel had only been preached to Jewish people. But now God has said, now everyone is welcomed into the family of God. Go and proclaim and preach. And it was, through, it was through God speaking. What we see is that here, God speaks through an angel 
And God speaks through a trance and he puts people together and it becomes a turning point that brings great advancement to the kingdom of God. Can I tell you, it's important that we understand this, that God's voice is transformational. And God's voice is so important and significant that it's not something that we can just relegate to, oh, that happened in the book of Acts. No, this is for the church in every generation, that God still speaks. And God speaks in a lot of different ways. God speaks through nature. Romans 1 says that his attributes are evident in all of creation. So I don't know about you, but it's hard to stand out in the mountains and stare up at the stars and walk away and going, this all happened by chance. Creation declares that there's a God. God speaks through creation. God speaks through his word, Psalm 119. It says that your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It says that your law, O Lord, is perfect to the converting of the souls. Oh, how I love your word. And so God speaks to us through his word. Every day when I wake up and I read the Bible, God is speaking to me. Because the Bible is the only book that when you're reading it, it's reading you. It's spirit and in truth. Jesus said that it's spirit and truth. Hebrews 4 12 says that the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword dividing between soul and spirit, bone and marrow. So God speaks through his word, but God also speaks in other ways. He speaks through a still small voice. How many have ever had that before? That little nudge, that little prod, you shouldn't or you should. You're just like, why is that person's face popping up in my heart? And then you call them and find out they needed a word of encouragement. You might just think, oh, that's coincidence. I, I believe in God incidences, not coincidences. But God speaks that way. And one of the other ways that God speaks that we just read is through dreams and visions and angels. Joel 2, he said, I will pour out my spirit in the last days. And old men shall have visions and young men will dream dreams. And upon your maidservant and your men servant, I will pour out my spirit in that day. I mean, it's, we're living in that day, the day after Pentecost, where God has poured out his spirit. And he says, I'm going to speak. I'm going to use dreams and visions and angels. How many of you have ever had a dream that you just suspect that God was speaking to you and trying to get your attention on something? Anybody ever had that? Well, if you've had that, you probably have all had that. You just don't even know it. You thought it was because you had too much pepperoni on your pizza, but it may have been the Lord speaking to you. We just have to learn the language of the Lord. And sometimes he send angels. I've not seen an angel that I'm aware of, but I keep praying. I got about 50 years left on this planet, hopefully. And uh, in that 50 years, I would love to see an angel. But in this moment, he sends an angelic minister. But one of the other ways that God speaks is he speaks through others. And it's one of the most profound and one of the most powerful gifts that God has given to his bride is that he would choose to use us to speak to each other. His word, words of encouragement. He speaks to us through wise counsel. He speaks to us through spiritual authority. But he speaks to us through gifts. And one of the gifts that he uses is prophecy. And prophecy is... God speaking a now word in a now moment to a person who needs now direction. That's what prophecy is. It never violates the word of God. God isn't schizophrenic. He doesn't say one thing in the Bible and another thing through the gift of prophecy. The, the gift of prophecy is always in alignment with scripture, but it's a now word spoken through a person in a now situation. That's what the gift of prophecy. This is what the Lord is saying to you. And when he does it, he does it for three reasons. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse number three, that those who prophesy to people are doing it for three things. Number one, for upbuilding. They're strengthening them. I think the New King James says edification. You're edifying, you're building something. So the gift of prophecy is to build up, not tear down. Sometimes people think that prophecy is gonna be a guy with a long beard coming in and you know, pulling people out and calling out their sin and embarrassing them and pronouncing judgment on things. And, and that's really more of an Old Testament picture of the gift of prophecy. It's not even the office of the prophet. But prophecy is primarily the Holy Spirit speaking through people to build them up, number one. And number two, to bring encouragement to our hearts. It's supposed to be encouraging. I can't tell you how many times where I've been in a a place or in a season of my life that just was wondering, it's like, Lord, are you ever going to move? Are you ever going to shift things? Are you ever going to speak? 
And in the midst of those droughts, to receive a word from somebody, the book of Proverbs says that word of encouragement from a friend is like, it's like cold water, it's like snow during the time of harvest. It's refreshing to us. And that's what prophecy is, is it brings encouragement. And the third thing it brings is comfort. So I want you to think about this, upbuilding, encouragement, and comfort. God comes to upbuild us in our present situation and encourage us about his future plans for us while at the same time bringing comfort to us of the pain of our past. Because sometimes there is pain that we're carrying and questions from our past that we've never resolved. And sometimes the fact that God speaks to us in a now moment lets us know we're not alone. He's with us. He sees us. And even though we may not get the answers, we know his presence is with us. And I'll tell you this, I would rather have his presence than answers any day of the week. I would rather have his nearness than any other thing in my life. Over the last couple of weeks, Jane and I have been standing with our son-in-law, Zach, and our daughter, Ashley. And as many of you know, our, our uh, daughter gave birth to two premature babies. One of them, Reese, passed away last Sunday. And the other one, Celia, is doing very well. And, but, you know, she's very preemie. And so your prayers and those of you who've encouraged us, we just can't thank you enough for that. Uh, but in the midst of that, we've just been so comforted by the Holy Spirit. It's hard. We won't stand up here and say that it's been easy. It has not been easy. But our faith is not shaken. We know that God is good. We don't know all the whys, but we know the who. And last night, sitting at dinner with our presbyters, uh, Wayne Drain, who's been here many times, pulled out a piece of paper and he said, I've been praying for you and God gave me a word for you and for your family for this season. And as he read it to us in the restaurant, it just brought, it just brought hope to our hearts and it brought healing to our hearts. That's what the gift of prophecy does. God speaks through other people. You see, because when God speaks, his voice eclipses all other voices. And so today, we're going to see that gift in operation. Tonight at 6 p.m. here, we're going to have another service. We have selected, hand-selected, some candidates that are going to come up on stage in a moment. Uh, I'm going to introduce our presbyters. They have been praying over the last few weeks about candidate couple number one, candidate couple number two. They don't know names, but they've just been leaning in, praying, asking God to speak. And so we've asked them to come. They're trusted friends and ministers. When they see them up on the platform today, they got their names. It was the first time they ever had names. But how many know Jesus knows their names? And they're going to speak and prophesy over their life. And we're all going to get to in, enjoy and sit back and encourage and see that take place. And then at the end of, the, at the end of that, uh, we're going to release them to move throughout the room and share prophetic words to people spontaneously here. So when they, if they point you out, just stand up, tell them your name, and receive the word. And listen, if you don't get a word today or tonight or tomorrow night, that's fine. If you hear something that sounds like it's God speaking to you, we allow ricochet words, which means it bounces off you and sticks to me. And go ahead and you just go ahead and claim that and say, I'm, I'm co-signing that word. And it's going to be powerful, okay? So what I want to do is I want to invite uh, everyone, if you would, to just uh, portage in here. Would you just pray with me? Father, we're so grateful that you're a good God and you speak to us. And we ask you today, Lord, would you strengthen us and allow the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the spirit of prophecy to come and manifest itself. And Lord, speak over these individuals and speak over your people and speak over us as a church because Lord, we long for your voice. We long for your voice. Jesus, you said, I am the good shepherd and my sheep know my voice. Lord, we know your voice. Give us ears to hear your voice today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's my uh, privilege and opportunity to introduce uh, how we're going to facilitate presbytery here in Portage. And I just want to allow you to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Breathe deep. Everything's okay. And this is just a, an incredible time to really, yes, there's a sobriety that the Lord is speaking, but we also can enjoy it and it's participatory. So we want you to participate. 
You know, if someone in the room is receiving a word, let's amen it. Let's, let's jump in and celebrate the words that are being released. And so we don't have to be so tight in a shell, curled up. No, we want to we wanna really be confident in the Lord, confident in his word, confident in his voice today. All right. It's a little word of encouragement. I want to invite my wife, Candace, up here on stage with me. She's going to be helping me. Can you welcome my wife, Candace, up to the stage? Earlier this morning, she was uh, doing presbytery with uh, our kids' ministry up in the room, and Pastor Bucky is doing an incredible job today uh, with his wife, Aubrey, facilitating that. And I can't wait, can't wait to hear all that happened in those kids' rooms today. I want to introduce to you uh, our first presbyter. She joins us from Dallas, Texas, and she's been an encouragement to Candace and I. Uh, three summers ago, she gave a word to us uh, just about rooting ourselves into the soil of Kalamazoo and into Radiant Church, and that's just been a really impactful word. And so if we stay too long, it's her fault. Sorry. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but she's been a gift to us. She's been a gift to Radiant Church. Pastor Lee and I traveled last summer to Dallas and uh, seeing her minister there with her family to that church, her home church around the country. And she's here with us in Portage today. Would you welcome Lisa Corley to the stage? This other gentleman, like this guy, he, him and I share a similar bald head. And uh, he is a stout man physically, but stout in the Lord and thankful for his leadership. Longtime friend of Pastor Lee, uh, Radiant Church Ionia. And he has been doing ministry in the prophetic for many years. And even this summer at a Rise Shine conference, it was a, a spontaneous prophetic moment and called in. And so thankful for his investment into Kalamazoo, into Radiant Church. Would you welcome Pastor John Perminsky? This morning, we were just praying together, and I just sensed the Lord remind me of this passage out of Amos chapter 7, verse 7, and this is what he showed me. This is a, a vision that the Lord's giving the prophet Amos. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside me, a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand, and the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people. Just to call to remembrance today what's true in heaven. See, I'm not a carpenter, I'm a pastor, but I had to learn in remodeling my home that what's true at the top is true at the bottom, right? And so this plumb line is being set from heaven and to earth. And this plumb line that our presbyters have prayed, have asked the Lord, and they're gonna release today. And so we're excited for them to do that. And so I wanna introduce our first candidate this morning is Toby and Michaela Kavanaugh. Would you make yourself on up here? So presbyters, this is Toby and Michaela. Never met them before, have no idea who you are. How's it going, guys? <laughs> What's up? Oh, I'm so glad it's you when you get these words. Um, you're a strong couple. You're a formidable team. You're confident in who you are and what you're about. I saw you guys as a loaded tool belt able to fix just about anything. Ladies first, you're personable, you're bubbly, you're fun, but you're hardworking. The sleepy and the stagnant weary you. You're no stranger to opposition. Life was no cakewalk for you. Jesus stabilized and settled your life. You know what he's done for you and he'll do for others. I saw you with young women, encouraging them. I saw prophetic gifting in you. You're an exhorter. I. Even as I'm standing before you, I, I see you as a Deborah, um, and I, I'm not going to just l limit this to, to now, but even as you grow older, I see women coming to you. As you're younger, you're able to go out more. As you're older, people will seek you out 
and I see them seeking you out for the wisdom that you have, coming to you for the wisdom that you, you have. Toby, you're cautious, you're frugal, but wise. You've seen success through patience. You've seen God come through as you were willing to wait. I saw you calming anxious people. You're a principled man. Um, and I could say that I've seen that even as you've ministered to my own son now standing before you. You see steps where others see seasons. You see and set course and direction. You believe healthy habits and patterns result in successful outcomes. In the past, or even up until now, people have listened to you because of what you've done in the days to come. People will listen to you because of what God shows you. You've wanted more time with some people, but God's asking you to be content with the time you've had. I heard 1 Corinthians 3, 6, one plants, one waters, but God gives the increase. God bless you guys. It's a blessing to know you. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry. Um, I just loved looking over at you and both of your, your posture and it just your hearts were such in a, a way where you were just really wanting to not be distracted and just receive from the Lord. And so, I, but I want to be able to look at both of you because I really just feel like the Lord is wanting to just impart this to both of you. And so, Michaela, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Michaela, you are someone that is productive, you're organized, you like having a system in place, and you like to have a plan. You are also someone who has really good taste and ideas, and you feel like your opinions are very helpful, and I even see you as someone who would leave a review if you thought what you had to say would be helpful, but you're not critical. I also saw you as someone who has a lot of favorite things and you love sharing those favorite things with the people you love. It also makes you a good and thoughtful gift giver. I see a lioness rising up within you. There is a calling on you to wake up the sleepy Christians, call out the things that they have let go dormant and to awaken the dreams that are in their hearts. I see such a boldness on you. You are so done with the enemy ruining so many people's lives and you are the one to lead the charge that steps up and says, not today, Satan. I don't know if you have a shirt with that saying on it, but I, thought I saw that saying on a shirt. Um, I see younger kids hungry for the words you have to share, the middle generation being empowered and equipped by your influence, and the older generation feeling a sense of responsibility um, by the example that you leave and what you show them needs to be done. Your ministry spans across many generations and your impact will be wide. Your wisdom comes from stewarding your relationship with the Lord well and the way you've been able to process the situations in your life that have been hard at time, but you haven't let them defeat you. Um, this may be random, but I also heard the word culinary school over you. And it may be that you go through it or you teach others how to be cooks or a homemaker. Maybe you just need to put it on a shelf to see how God applies it. But you are someone who truly has the capacity and drive that could run this country. Don't ever feel like you have to back down because you are not pushy, you're just passionate. And you will break down barriers, open doors, and help give people a fighting chance that they wouldn't have otherwise if it weren't you stepping up on their behalf. And for the ones that you have yet to help, I want to stay in advance on their behalf. Thank you for what you're willing to do. Toby, you are someone who takes care of people well. You are like good medicine because they get better after being around you. I heard you're a good problem solver. You just don't want to sit around talking about the problem, but you want to plan, find a solution. 
You are also good at helping people set up a plan for their future. You would make a good investment a guy, a portfolio kind of guy like JP Morgan, something like that. You help them have a clear picture of where they want to go and the actions helping them plan for their future and how they can grow where they're investing. You're also someone who knows a lot of songs. Uh, when a song comes on that you know, you um, feel the need maybe to bust out a line or two from that song. Um, new things don't intimidate you. You try to keep maybe one thing consistent, but then you like adding new and different things to keep um, your life from being boring and predictable. People do see you as responsible and someone they can count on. You truly have a gift of being able to connect with people. I heard the words sharp shooter over you. Not sure if you have guns or like them, but what this is in the spirit I believe is that you have a good aim at being able to get to the heart of the issue. Um, you're steady under stressful conditions and you are able to not be deterred in the waiting process. And you also know how to keep your eye on the target. Toby, you're a strong man with a humble heart that doesn't hold on to things too lightly or too tightly and allow them to move freely through your hands. You are like Joseph and you have stored up well in the season of plenty so you can lend when people find themselves in dry seasons. And one last thing, Toby, I felt this strongly that you need to hear how much Jesus enjoys his time with you and also how proud he is of you. And don't ever minimize how valuable you are at how you help expand the kingdom and invest in his people. You do so much at helping them to be successful that you need to realize that you truly are, Toby, one of God's top guns. Bless you. Tom Cruise word right there. Very timely. Um, we just want to affirm those words spoken a few things. Toby and Michaela oversee our Radiant School of Ministry, uh, executive pastor, and just moved from New York about two years ago. And uh, incredible family, become close friends of ours, live in the Portage area, attend here, preaches regularly here at Radiant Church. And so we honor you. We honor the word of the Lord spoken over you the tool belt, seeing how God has placed so many different people that require different expertise and you knowing uh, which tools to use at which time to, uh, as you build up, encourage and strengthen. And uh, Toby and Michaela also traveled to China for many years. And so building up the kingdom of God, calling young people to the, the mission field. And so uh, obviously there's rich words uh, woven into what they said, but just to affirm uh, just a few of the things that they spoke over you. Yes, I was drawn to emotion several times because it, it truly, all of their words were exactly who you guys are. If you want to know the Kavanaugh's, you just got to know them by what they said. And, um, you know, I, I don't, you said culinary school and, um, you know, I don't know if you'll go to culinary school, but what you don't know is that she's remodeling her kitchen and it's this beautiful work of art. And I feel like also just that that is gonna be a space just where young women can come and be schooled by you. I mean, that's where the culinary arts is produced, right? It's out of the kitchen and just affirming everything that they said is, it is so beautiful to see. Um, you guys here at Radiant and being able, we're so lucky and thankful to have you guys here at Radiant. And so just wanna pray over them and these words. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, just the time, the timely words spoken over this couple and their family. We thank you, Father, for the, the balm even that can cover wounds and, and even just the words of, um, how you love spending time with Toby and how you see Michaela rising up as a lioness. And Jesus, we just call forth these words. Leaving like a garden where seeds are planted, Father, we ask that Holy Spirit, you would water these seeds, that you would bring the sunshine on to their soil. Lord, I pray that they would produce good fruit in them. And Lord, we thank you for these words and we thank you for this couple and this family. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless them. We thank you for them. 
We thank you for these words and we pray, God, that they would embed deeply into their souls, hearts, and minds. God, that they would recall them over the years. Jesus, as you lead them, as you lead their family, God, that they are making a wise investment into their children. And God, we thank you for who they're building up, who they're discipling, and that this family will be a family that multiplies in the way that they invest and build and strengthen the kingdom of God. We bless them today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we celebrate them? Thank you for our presbyters. Love you guys. This is our opportunity to transition, to have our presbyters uh, facilitate our second part of the service, which is words in season. And so uh, if you saw them staring at you earlier, uh, they may have been asking the Lord for a word uh, over you and for you. And so again, today we want to open up our hearts to receive what God is calling out. If they call on you, stand up quickly, share your name with them. And then also, if you're sitting around them, if you're a friend or family, we want to also encourage and celebrate, give amens, and participate as they're releasing these words. There I am. There I am. You, sir, uh, you were wearing glasses earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Because I hate to have written down a man with son and wife and uh, glasses, and then um, that would be off. Um, Saw you as a man of precision. Character and order matter greatly. Uh, I saw a military discipline to your life. Uh, You love that God is a God of order, but I'm here to warn you that I see God upsetting your ox cart. I see you becoming undignified in worship and wonder, um, but no worries, it'll all be Jesus. Um, And I know that it it isn't easy for you to step out into the unknown and and into uncharted territory, but I feel God leading you into things you have not known um, because there's a hunger and you want to know. And as much as we plan and as much as we prepare, timing is always um, the Lord's. And in that aspect, you're going to lead your family. I believe that the second half of your life is going to be greater than the former. The latter rain is always greater than the former rain. And I see God doing great things with you and your family. God bless you guys. And your name again? My name's John. John. Hey, can you stand up? What's your name? Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, you have the best smile. Taylor, yes, girl, it is your assignment to call out the nonsense. God has gifted you to not let much get past you, and you are someone who is an observer, and you are called to be the mouthpiece to call people up, stop the foolishness that they are in, and help them to want more out of their life. I also see that God is calling you to a life of faith where you will get exactly what you need, exactly when you need it, and when you need it. But it might make your life feel frustrating at times because you won't get it in advance. But you are gonna have some really cool God stories because there's gonna be ways that God shows up that it's so obvious that it's God, and you're gonna be able to have those stories that you're gonna be able to tell. I heard expect the unexpected, silence of voices that are gonna tell you otherwise, and protect the space that needs to be reserved for only God. And that's how you're gonna live this life that God's called you to is don't let any of those competing voices get in the space that God's saying, that's mine and only mine. All right, bless you. How's it going? What's your name? Chad. Chad? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, uh, See, I saw you alone at first, and then your wife and uh, and your little boy. Um, I I saw you standing alone at times. 
Um, and though surrounded, there were times when you felt alone. And I heard the Lord say that he sees the desires of your heart and the prayers that you prayed with tears will soon be answered. You're a man that's not moved by masses or crowds. Um, you're your own man. You're a lifelong and you're a very loyal friend. And I just, I heard that um, you're, uh, you're not slow to make friends. It's just that friendship matters a great deal to you and who you allow into your inner circle is very, very important to you. You bond and you bond for a lifetime. Um, you're the kind of friend that every man wants. And I just see God more than surrounding you. He's heard your prayers. He's seen your tears, your desires that, um, and the Bible talks about the desires of our heart being given in us. The desires of our heart are those things we haven't even prayed about to the Lord. They're so in our heart that God sees our heart and he meets those needs. And so I believe that um, your ship's coming in, that the desires of your heart are going to begin to get answered. And I'm just blessed enough to be able to tell you beforehand. God bless you, man. Hi. Can you stand up? What's your name? Hannah. Oh, Hannah. That's a good name. You need to read about Hannah in the Bible. She was a woman that was persistent at prayer and faithful. And Hannah, this is what I saw over you. I saw such a spirit of encouragement. I saw you as someone that's willing to go out of your comfort zone to help make people feel better. Hannah, you are loyal and you are a steady friend, but there have been times when you have felt that you've been taken advantage of and it's made you reluctant to open your heart up to new relationships. But I just wanna encourage you to not let those relationships close you off from the ones that the Lord's gonna bring in your life that are gonna help you, guide you, and direct you. And it's hard when we have wounds and hurts from our past to not carry those with us into the future, but I just want to encourage you to take those before the Lord and just allow Him to heal the brokenness in that because you have such a gift and I really saw the Lord using you in the kids' ministry. I don't know if you have a heart for kids or have ever volunteered, but I really saw the prophetic aspect that they're doing this weekend with the kids. I saw the Lord really using you to be a voice to speak such life, such hope, and such purpose, even at a young age, that God's gonna give you a voice and a place in those tender hearts. Because you know what, Hannah? You are someone who God can trust. And so I just want you to believe in yourself, open yourself up to the God relationships that He's gonna bring in and realize how much you are needed in the investment that you can bring to this house. And so I'm just asking on behalf of the ministries here, look for ways that you can get involved and that you can serve because you will be such a hope. You will be such a breath of fresh air and you will be such a treasure because of truly how tender heart you have for God's people. All right, bless you. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob, stand up. I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I saw. Um, I saw you laughing at the thought of God, using, of, of God using you, but that's exactly what God desires to do, um, wants to use you. Um, you're strong, you're resolute, and you have, I heard the Lord say that you have strong views about how things should be. Um, great, so does God. Um, and uh, I see you as this outwardly big guy, but inwardly you're very tender, you're very soft, obviously from the way that you, kids are crawling all over you. God wants to use you, and He isn't trying to change who you are. He's made you who you are. He wants to use you as you are. And so any notion that you have to be like this or that or another thing, I can remember what it was like being in a church, a large church with 13 pastors that had three-piece suits on, yet God speaking to me, telling me how, to, how he wanted to use me, and I didn't see myself being like any of those guys. I thought they had more dignity and class in their finger than, than I ever could. 
yet here I am today um, because God changes us, but he uses us as he's created us to be. And so um, he's not looking for you to be like anybody else. He needs you to be you, Jacob, and he wants to use you. And as your namesake, um, he wrestled with God. I see this wrestling match going on and God's beginning to warn you that he's going to use you. And I think he already has, and you may not have realized it, um, but God wants to use you, man. God bless you. Thank you. you bet. Hi, what's your name? Sharon, do, do you want to stand up or do you want to stay seated? Sharon, I'm, I'm calling you. This is for you. Sharon, what I see over you is you are a Bible-believing, scripture-quoting, truth-sayer kind of woman. You have a love to analyze the word and you love to talk about the ways of God. I see, though, that you feel like in some ways that you have figured God out, but I saw a greater manifestation of God's Spirit in the days ahead for you. I see God blowing your mind in the way that He will move, and I believe that God is going to use some of the tools that you have gained from being here at Radiant to be able to help His Spirit show up in greater ways. And so I just want to encourage you to really not have a default that you keep going to, like, but God, this is how you showed up before. I'm looking for it this way because you might miss where God's wanting to show up in this other way. But you know a lot, you understand a lot, and now you just need to get your belief to get high again, to know that God will show up again. And so I just want to encourage you that you haven't lost all hope in it, that there really is so much more that God has to come. And I just want to honor you, though, for how much you do treasure the Word. There is such a protection that you have over the authenticity of it and it being sacred. And so I just want to say that those are the kind of people that we're grateful to have in this house. But I think that the Lord wants to reveal different aspects of His gifts, and He's going to surprise you in the days that are ahead, okay? All right, bless you. Hey, you guys, what are your names? Jonathan and Jennifer. Jonathan and Jennifer. Family matters greatly to you both. I saw marriage and family ministry in your future. I don't know how plugged in you are. I don't know what you do here. I barely know what Pastor Stefan does here. Um, so um, I, uh, I, I saw how much you loved family gatherings. You love the family being together, gathered around a table. I believe God is telling me to tell you that God is enlarging your table so that more than just those that are family, those that are outside your family are going to be welcome to the table. And I saw you in a very, very casual, very organic, very natural way um, ministering to those outside your family, um, imparting the love that you have for marriage and family and others. And God is just kind of serving you notice beforehand. God bless you both. Hi. Can you stand up? What's your name? My name is Carter. Carter. Carter, this is an interesting word then for your name. Carter, when I looked over you, I saw a political calling on your life. I saw possibly something either for you to run or be a voice against policies that just haven't seemed right to you. And I really saw you having an influence of because of who you are an articulate, you are smart, and you are a studier. And those three things will make you really good at what God's wanting to call you to. And so if that is something that's new, I just wanna let you submit that before the Lord, but just say that I really see big aspirations for you and what you're anointed to do and the kind of influence I see on you for what you're able to accomplish when you put your will and your mind together. You're such a force that this area needs you and I think it's even beyond. But I would just not shrink back when you feel a stirring in you to want to get in there and make a change because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to empower you to be able to get in there and do what He needs to do through you. All right? Bless you.
You guys, what are your names? Chris and Becky Smith. Chris, Chris and Becky. Chris and Becky. What's up? Um, saw you guys as not cookie cutter people. There's a distinct flavor to who you are. And I saw you connecting with couples. I saw you ministering freedom. There's, there's a freedom about you. Freedom's important to you. Um, and I heard this. I heard that you love Jesus, but you can't stand religion. Um, you can't stand that which restricts and that which binds and that which limits. Um, there's, there's a freedom to you, and I believe God wants to, to use that. If, if you'll sign up, um, if you'll sign up for it, I believe God is calling you out, and he's encouraging you to step out and be used. And the, the beautiful thing about this church, about the Radiant Churches, is that God is enlisting um, people into active service. Um, and, uh, and don't compare and don't look around and don't think like we're any of these. You're not, and that's why he wants to use you. And so let him, um, let him, let him, let him. People need to know that they can be free. People need to know they can fall in love with Jesus and be free, free, free. And God wants to use you both. God bless you. So thankful for these words over us, the people of God, to see and to recognize the significance and the clarity and the accuracy of the words over Hannah and Jacob, John and Jennifer, to see it over John and Becky and Chris, Carter. We bless those words. And like Pastor Lee said, if those are a ricochet word, if that's something that you've been asking the Lord for, and one of those connected to you, you want to receive that, take that as you leave today. Let's stand together as we close our service. I'm going to invite our prayer ministries and pastors forward. Just give you an opportunity that even today, if there's something in your heart and your spirit that you're desiring prayer, we would love to do that. Laying on of hands, the gift of prayer, the gift of faith, the gift of healing. And so our pastors and team will be readily available up here. I wanna pray for you as we close and then we'll dismiss. If you would, just close your eyes and let's go before the Lord. God, I thank you that your voice is with us. Your presence is near to us. God, you love speaking, a father over his children. And so we as your children, we see the words, we hear the words. And God, would it, would it be settled in the soil of our hearts that you are alive you love to speak, and I pray for us, those that are in the room desiring a word, that there's going to be a time appointed ahead that the Lord's going to deposit his voice and to be ready, available to receive the word of the Lord. He loves to speak to you and his children, and we receive it in this corporate setting, but we're ready and available to hear the word of the Lord. God, we love you. We love your presence. We thank you for the gift of prophecy. God, would you allow us in this season to grow as a body, grow as a church in the voice of the Lord and in your speaking, God. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen.